Hello again, happy you're joining us for another Truth Outreach program. Truth Outreach is a program grounded in truth, which brings to you a comparison of the beliefs and the teachings of the Mormon Church, uh, comparing that with Christianity. And of course, the baseline that we use uh, in that comparison is the B-I-B-L-E, the, the Bible, God's inerrant word. I am Rocky Hulse, and this lovely lady on my right is my beautiful wife, Helen. And we welcome you today to another program, and we're so looking forward to you spending the next uh, few minutes, half hour with us, and, um, and uh, hopefully we will, perfectly we are going to bring you what our program is called, Truth Outreach. Amen. You know, on this program, uh, those of you that watch it all the time, and thank you so much for, for our faithful uh, viewers, and appreciate your, your letters and emails that, that we oh, come in, so and much. those that come into the, to the TV station, and uh, thanks so much for watching. But those of you that do watch know that we start our program out with a couple of quotes from Mormon leaders, one from Brigham Young, and then his second, or first counselor, uh, George A. Smith, and we believe those quotes really uh, give us license to do what we do here, that comparison. So let's put them up on the screen for you. The first quote is from, <clears throat> excuse me, from Brigham Young. And Brigham Young says, I say to the whole world, receive the truth no matter who presents it to you. Take up the Bible, compare the religion of the Latter-day Saints with it, and see if it will stand the test. Now his first counselor, George A. Smith, said, if a faith will not bear to be investigated, if its preachers and professors are afraid to have it examined, their foundation must be very weak. So let's do some examining. Today's program is number 68, and uh, it is titled, A Book Review of the Book, The Mormon Conspiracy. Uh, before we get started uh, on this, we have been doing some filming the last couple days here at WTJR. Yesterday we filmed four new programs. Today, this is the fourth of, of uh, our programs here today that we filmed. Helen and I haven't been able to do that for uh, more than a year because I was extended on active duty in the Navy and was sent off to, uh, to and stationed aboard the, the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy down in uh, Mayport, Florida. And so uh, because of that, we, we haven't been able to, to do any new programs. And so WTJR has been, been continuing. We had 60 programs filmed, and they've been showing those as reruns. But we're just happy to be here and filming some, some new programs. And Very tomorrow we're going to do that. four more, so we'll have 12 new programs uh, on, on the shelves available to WTJR. And, and then we're going to come back and continue to, to do that. Uh, but um, uh, out while I was on the Kennedy, of course, we had, Kennedy is not by itself when it's out there. It's got a whole air wing, and it's got escort ships and staffs on board, which comprise the carrier battle group. And so I've been highlighting uh, a, a, one of those uh, each time. And today, on today's program, I want to highlight an F another F-18 squadron that was on board the Kennedy. And this is a hat from these guys, got an F-18 on the, the front of it. And this is VFA-83, and they're called the Rampagers. And you can see the, uh, the F-18 there in the center. center. And uh, this was one of three F-18 squadrons that was on board the John F. Kennedy. And I'll slide this in. This was their patch. They call themselves the Rams. Uh, uh, Strike Fighter Squadron 83, F-18s. And uh, they did a great job uh, supporting the troops uh, in the ground in Iraq and, and providing air cover for them. And I also have a shirt here uh, from those guys. Um, and uh, this is, a, you know, got their, really takes their patch and kind of blows it up. but. Uh, you know, we, we like these mementos, memorabilia in the, in the military. It gives us esprit de corps. And uh, so I, I uh, pick these shirts up and patches and hats and stuff to kind of show them to you and, and, and reinforce to, to you here that the military is doing a great job out there. And it's not just the Navy. Uh, of course, I am Navy, and, and uh, so that's what I'm showing here. But the, but the Army's on the ground doing an awesome job. The Marine Corps, boy, they have the heavy lifters in there in the war in Iraq. Uh, the Air Force, uh, you know, we were flying about half the day the airstrikes, and the other half the day the Air Force was, mm -hmm. was doing it. The Coast Guard is over there protecting the oil terminals off the Kuwaiti coast. Um, uh, the, the, the National Guard troops, Air National Guard, Army National Guard, I mean, it's, the, it's, it's all of, the, uh, of them together working as a team, and they're doing a great job. You hear all this negative, negative, negative 
on the news. And let me tell you, folks, it's not all negative. They're doing some great mm -hmm. things over there. I wish the news would would get a clue and, and show some of the good things that are happening in that country, the changes that our armed forces have brought. We and need to pray for those that yeah, are pray, serving. Absolutely. We really I, need to absolutely. lift them up in prayer mm -hmm. and and uh, continued prayer for what they're doing that, that keeps our country safe. Yep. And, uh, and allows us our television stations like this and Christian radio and, mm -hmm. and our country safe and the freedoms that we enjoy because of freedom of, of speech and freedom of religion absolutely and, uh, absolutely and, and just the, the ability to carry mm -hmm. on our way of life so thank you uh, those that are serving over there right now uh, our, our Iraqi and Afghanistan war vets and also thank you World War II vets and Korean war vets and mm -hmm. and uh, Vietnam war vets and Gulf war vets all of those that have served their country are all part of the cumulative whole that it allows us what we the freedoms we enjoy in our wonderful country today. Mm -hmm. And we just encourage you to, uh, like I said, pray for them, but but write write them letters and and tell them that that there's um, people out here that are praying and supporting them in what they're doing because mm -hmm. it's very uplifting. I know I was encouraged when I got got that kind of of uh, information. Well, that's a great point. Thanks, Ellen. Uh, you know. Uh, sometimes I just look at the technical things. I'm the <laughs> yes, technical you do. <laughs> guy, and I don't uh, kind of uh, bring out the, you know, the warmth uh, of uh, and, and uh, the personal side of, uh, you know, that's why you know God put men and women together. Guys are more technical, you know, we're the nuts and bolts kind of things, and women have that personal. <laughs> oh, aspect. I'm glad I didn't say nuts and bolts. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are, you know, we're the widget guys. We fix things, you know, and we're the we're the analysts, you know. I, that's why I like this doing the, the research for these programs because I'm the I'm the analytical guy, you know. I like that. But uh, again, today's program is um, was program number 68, and it's titled "It's a Book Review of the Mormon Conspiracy." Now. This is the, uh, what we're going to take a look at, this book here, called The Mormon Conspiracy. And um, he's zooming in on it there. And uh, I read through this book, and very, very interesting. Kind of a... You took it with you on deployment. On deployment, and I had a chance to, to read it. Now, I'm going to put up for you on the screen our first slide, just to more clearly shows you the name of the, of the book and, uh, and who wrote it. It was written by Charles L. Wood. Now, this this book certainly has a has a very different title, and uh, and we'll and we'll talk about that. Uh, I read this book while I was uh, deployed, to, you know, to the to the Persian Gulf on board the John F. Kennedy. Uh, and of course, John Kennedy is nicknamed Big John, and uh, so uh, I read it while I was on board Big John. And uh, you know, this book really is a is a pretty fast read. Um, it's about 290 pages, but. Uh, uh, the the print's not uh, it's not real small, so it, it reads pretty fast, goes real fast. Now uh, let's take a look at it uh, a little bit. The front cover, which we just saw, you know, the, the title, the Mormon Conspiracy, and then underneath it, a real small print, which you can't even see, probably even panning in, but it says uh, a review of present day and historical conspiracies to Mormonize uh, America and the world. Now, some of you are already going conspiracy. Uh, you know, so what's he talking about here? Well, let's go, uh, we'll go a few pages into uh, to the book just before the, the preface, and the author defines what he is talking about. And I'm going to put it up on the screen. It's like one, two, three, four, five, or four slides here or whatever, uh, kind of in a row. Uh, and let's see exactly what the officer is talking about when he uses that, that term conspiracy in the, in the title of the book. Since conspiracy has several meanings, it's necessary to spell out the author's intent in using it, not only in the title, but in various places in the content of this book. The author's use of conspiracy does not imply that the Mormon church officials are acting illegally in the Mormonizing of America and the world, but it does mean that they often uh, plan and act together secretly. For example, their secrecy in controlling the financial affairs of the church and the attempt to keep the harmful Mark Hoffman forgeries secret. Now, on the back cover uh, of, uh, of this book, uh, and we're going to go into some of this stuff there. It's real small writing. And you, just, you can see little, there's all kinds of stuff there. And I'm going to bring some of that out in, in slides for you on the screen. Uh, slide number four, on the back cover it says, 
Citizens of the United States and indeed people of all nations must understand that the Mormon Church's furtive intention is to dominate the world. For history shows us that sometimes a handful of men dedicated to a cause can gain control of a government. Witness Lenin's gaining control of Russia in 1917 and Hitler's rise to power in Germany in 1932. We must be vigilant in our efforts to keep our freedoms of thought, speech, religion, and individualism intact. Now, there is an endorsement on, uh, on the, the back page of this by a person by the name of, I think it's Ronnie Higley. And uh, I'm going to put that endorsement up on the screen for you. It says, Dr. Charles L. Wood has done a remarkable work in his research into Mormonism. He has written a very comprehensive volume dealing with issues that most others who have written about the Mormon church have left untouched. Namely, the political ambitions of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and how they have become successful in this goal, unnoticed by the majority of Americans. He has captured the spirit of Mormonism and understood the internal structure amazingly well without ever having been a Mormon. Dr. Wood's research and conclusions show originality and give helpful conclusions which open the reader's mind to see the true nature and plan of the Mormon Church for America and the world. Now, uh, I had never uh, heard of this, of this Ronnie Higley person. I, I didn't know who this person was uh, before I picked up this book and read it and, and saw this endorsement on the back. But uh, right below the, uh, the endorsement, it has a little biographical sketch, uh, sketch, sketch, <laughs> sketch of who she is. See, I'm human. I botch things up, too. Uh, so let's see what this uh, little biographical uh, sketch says about who this person is, Ronnie Higley. I'll put it up on the screen. It says, Ronnie Higley was a convert to Mormonism in Finland, <clears throat> where she served a mission for the Mormon Church prior to immigrating to the United States in 1965. She started working full-time for the Mormon Church as a Finnish translator, interpreter, and coordinator almost immediately after arriving, uh, continuing until the end of 1979. Now, uh, so that's a little bit about who this person was. She, she was a convert to the church. She was Finnish. She, she migrated to America and went to work for the, for the Mormon Church when she got here. Now, the next endorsement is a name many of you will recognize, that being Sandra Tanner. Now, Sandra is the great-great-granddaughter of Brigham Young. Her and her husband, Gerald, are truly the foundational research ministry into historical Mormonism. Absolutely. Uh, Gerald and Sandra Tanner are, are personal friends of ours and are part of our testimony. Mm -hmm. uh, Helen became saved by me trying to convert her to Mormonism. And I got saved by trying to prove the Tanner's book, which she brought home from a Christian bookstore. It was called The Changing World of Mormonism. She brought that book home. And, and I said, this book is nothing but a pack of lies, and I'm going to prove it to you. And, and, you, and you kind of threw it in my direction. Yeah, that, that <laughs> book was very aerodynamic in design because I... Uh, I uh, air tested that puppy on a few occasions, I'll tell <laughs> yes, you. Yes, you did. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, you know, I set out to prove that that book was a pack of lies, and in the process I found out everything that was in that book was absolute documentation, and I was the one who didn't know that that stuff existed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the Tanners have just, uh, they are the foundational Mormon ministry. And uh, Sandra put her endorsement on there, so let's see what Sandra says about this book, The Mormon Conspiracy. She says, the Mormon conspiracy is an easy read yet detailed overview of Mormonism and its aspirations. It provides valuable insights to Mormon teachings, practices, and missionary work. Now, just like um, Ronnie uh, Higley in the, her endorsement, there's a, there's a little biographical sketch of the Tanners underneath that, and, and this is what that says. It says, Sandra and Gerald Tanner, ex-Mormons, are noted for their extensive collection of Mormon historical documents. These documents have been reproduced and are available with other books on Mormonism in the Utah Lighthouse Ministry Bookstore. That's the name of their ministry, the Utah Lighthouse Ministry. And they're right there in Salt Lake. The Tanners have authored several books, pamphlets, and articles summarizing their research of Mormon historical documents. Now, that, uh, that sketch there uh, of the Tanners doesn't even scratch the surface of, of their work. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gerald and Sandra Tanner have uncom uncovered volumes upon volumes of historical documentation on the changes, alterations, deletions, revisions uh, uh, of, of Mormonism 
that most Mormons know absolutely nothing about. Uh, the Tanners have done more research and have uncovered more evidence which shows that Mormonism is not what it touts itself to be than all other Mormon ministries, including ours, combined. Mm -hmm. they, they just have done volumes and volumes and volumes of work. And, and, uh, and it's all stood up the test of time. Okay. Uh, everything that they reproduce and have, have touted and shown, they've... they've uh, they, the Mormon Church took them to court one time and went down in flames because they're they're rock solid. Right. Uh, what they do, all they do is is just bring out what's there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lastly, on the back cover, gives a biographical sketch of the of the author Charles Wood, and I'll put that up for you so you can see who this fellow is. Charles L. Wood received his Ph.D. from the University of Iowa, and was a professor at the University of Akron. In addition, he held positions as teacher and administrator in elementary, secondary, and higher education. He's traveled extensively throughout the world and lived for several years in France and Germany. He authored two books on education prior to writing The Mormon Conspiracy. He also was the editor of the National Journal, American Secondary Education. So as we can see, the author uh, is quite accomplished in, uh, in his own right. Um, so why did he write this book? Since he was never a Mormon, what got him interested in Mormonism? And, and what I'm going to do is uh, go to the, to the uh, preface here and read a couple of things that I've, that I've highlighted. I don't even see them in green there. I kind of highlighted these things. Uh, and in his own words, uh, why he wrote this book. It says, the author first became interested in researching the Mormon church when he was given a copy of the Book of Mormon and was told that it had been translated uh, from some golden plates that God had given to 21-year-old Joseph Smith in the early 1800s in New England. The author could not accept the concept that a church claiming membership of 11 million members and having a corporate worth estimated to be more than $50 billion is using as its basis the highly improbable story of Smith's Book of Mormon. Because the author believed that the story was unlikely, he decided to investigate the Book of Mormon and the Mormon religion. This book relates the findings of this investigation that resulted in the author's conclusion that Smith's book is fraudulent and the Mormon religion which claims Smith's book as its basis is also untrue. Since this story and others found to be uh, false by the, uh, well, the, what he's talking about here is relating to DNA studies with the ancient inhabitants of America, uh, which sh clearly shows that the ancient Americans were not Jewish of descent, which the Book of Mormon says. And now I'll pick up this line. It says, since this story and others found uh, to be false by the author are still maintained to be true by Mormon church teachings, and the church has great financial resources and an extensive missionary network to promote and expand this religion that may threaten free and independent lifestyles and our democracy. American citizens have a duty and responsibility to monitor this religion as well as to research its honesty and truthfulness. The author feels that we cannot sit idly by while these great resources are being utilized through a vast television and human resources network that is constantly at work with slick public relations and carefully planned missionary programs to expand its membership. The Mormon Church is using all available means to increase its membership by obtaining converts and encouraging large families for the purpose of increasing its power and influence in the world. Intensive reading and research brought about the discovery by the author that the history of the church was fraught with deception, authoritarian rule and leadership, and was conspiratorial in its development. Numerous deceptions and conspiracies were discovered that took place in the 14-year reign of Joseph Smith and the 37-year reign of Brigham Young. The author discovered that these deceptions and conspiracies have continued to the present day as has been exemplified by our review of the Hoffman forgeries covered up in the 1970s and 1980s and the continued propag propagandizing by the current Mormon hierarchy of other matters. Therefore, the author feels obligated to present the documentation that he feels reveals the fraud and dishonesty that the church's vast propaganda machine dispenses as well as its real threat to democracy and freedom in America and throughout the world. Now, that, there's a lot said there, 
But this book is well, well documented. He, he doesn't just throw out things uh, which is just his word. He backs it all up with documentation. Now, as you can see, all these little tabs here uh, that I've got on, on, on the side of this book, I went through and I tabbed a bunch of things uh, while I was reading it. And um, so I'm just going to kind of flip through some of these things and, and just tell you some of what, what is in this book. Again, you know, this is uh, the, the, the Mormon Conspiracy by Charles L. Wood. Uh, there's a section here, and he's talking about uh, uh, the Book of Mormon, and it says the following are some of the absurdities in the Book of Mormon which caused a former member to disbelieve and eventually leave the Mormon church. And he goes through some of these different things. Uh, the Book of Mormon teaches that Indians originated from Jewish settlers. Well, uh, the Book of Mormon says that these, that these uh, uh, Jews in Jerusalem about 600 BC got on boats, sailed over to America, and they became the, uh, the ancestors of the American Indians. And in fact, that they were Jewish by descent. Well, m modern DNA has proven that to be absolutely false. But the Mormon church still holds to that premise. Uh, but science has shown that to be absolutely false. Um, Here's one that says, near the end of the Book of Mormon, a great battle is described that put, took place on Hill Cumorah, which is in western New York. Uh, and this battle supposedly happened about uh, 385 B.C. Uh, near Palmyra, New York, where hundreds of thousands of people were killed, according to the Book of Mormon, in this huge battle. Uh, and this is in, uh, in the Book of Mormon, and there's a book in the Book of Mormon called Mormon. And so this is Mormon chapter 6, verses 1 to 20. Now, no evidence of this battle, no breastplates, no helmets, no swords, no archaeology of any kind has been found. We, you can go around the world, and they have found the ancient battlefields of history. And they have found swords and helmets and all of these various things for all of these battles through history of the Romans and the Phoenicians and, and the Greeks. And the, and the Turks and, you know, all of this thing. Uh, history backs itself up with archaeology. But not in the Book of Mormon. It, it doesn't exist. Um, where's the next one here? And the next one here is kind of fascinating because this, this one applies to, uh, to Helen and I. It says, the indoctrination program has an element of fear and intimidation. The August 1992 Salt Lake Tribune reported that the First Presidency's spokesman acknowledged existence of a special, quote, strengthening the members committee, unquote, that keeps secret files on church members who are suspected or regarded as disloyal. <laughs> Due to publicity about this matter in the New York Times, the presidency issued a statement defending organization of this apostle-directed committee as consistent with God's commandments to Joseph Smith to gather documentation about non-Mormons who mob and persecute the LDS Church. Well, you know what? Um, and this continues, says, this file is now said to include names not only of Mormons but also non-Mormons, those who are critical or in any way questioning the church and its teachings. Well, Helen and I's names are in that file. There's absolutely no doubt. When we were down in Puerto Rico, we witnessed to uh, some Mormon missionaries down there, and they came over, and we started showing them this documentation and things about their church. And oh, we actually invited those. Well, gentlemen. we invited them there and and, uh, and fed them a meal, and then talked to them uh, about Mormonism. And uh, they came back, and we invited them to come back again. And uh, came back about four times. It was two young men, mm -hmm. and uh, I invited them over for dinner. Right. And uh, they had a lovely time. Told them I'd cook them a home cooked meal. They were from Utah and they came over about three times. And on the fourth time, they came back, one was missing. And in his place was a much older man mm -hmm. who said, We know who you are. Rocky and I had not even started Mormon Missions Midwest yeah, Outreach. This was, this this was, was in 1995. Uh, or six. Yeah, it was 1995. 1995. You're right. It was in 1995. We didn't start 
uh, Mormon Missions Midwest Outreach until uh, 2002. 2002. So it was seven years before we even started this ministry. And they knew who we were. Because I had written a church and asked to have my name removed from the roles of the church because I said the church is not true. And I want my name removed from the roles of the church. And so that was even in 1986, before, and yeah, it took us... E even before we started this ministry, uh, they knew who we were. Uh -huh. And you know that just backs up this documentation about these secret files that a, that a church keeps on anyone who should question uh, the validity of the church. Now, you think about that. You just If there's Mormons watching this right now in, uh, 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 in anywhere Nauvoo in this area. or anywhere in this area, but what... <laughs> There is not another Christian organization out there that maintains uh, files on secret files on people uh, in a clandestine manner about anyone who should who should speak out uh, uh, about Christianity. Right. It's just absurd. Should, but the should. Mormon Church is uh, is all about such things, and we'll go back in their history on future shows and show that right back to Joseph Smith and Brigham Young, there were secret organizations in the Mormon church. The Council of 50, um, and my mind just went blank. There's another, what's the, uh, oh, I can't think of it. Oh, phooey. You know, uh, it was, we'll just keep going on the air here, but I, I will bring those things out. I don't know where you're going with it, out, or I can help you. Um, that there were uh, secret organizations in Mormon history um, that went out and, went and, and, and actively sought out those that were enemies of the church. Well, I'm not an enemy of, of Mormons. No, it's just simply those that, that like, chose to leave the church. Yeah, Helen and I have nothing against Mormons, but we have everything against Mormonism because Mormonism preaches, teaches another Jesus, not the Jesus of the Bible. And so Mormons are following uh, a false Jesus. And, and the Bible clearly says that if you don't know who he is, if your name's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life on resurrection morning, he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. and, that is, and that is why we're here. We're here to educate Christians so they don't become Mormon, uh, uh, members of the Mormon church and to, and to tell Mormons of just, the real Jesus. Just to search, just to, to look and find the truth. And, and find out who the real Jesus is. We only got about 20 seconds left in this program. This is a this is a wonderful book. If you'd like to know how to get uh, get a hold of it, just write us and and, uh, and ask us, uh, folks. We need your support to continue these programs, and WTJR needs your support to continue broadcasting them. So we thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next week.